So we're thrilled today to have Arthur Violan, the current CEO of Bitcoin Swiss, and his uh, um, career path has been very interesting because he's had an amazingly successful career in the incumbent banking space and was actually the first person uh, representing a private bank that brought Bitcoin as a direct offering to, to the retail client or the private banking client. Um, so, Arthur, we're thrilled to have you here today on this historic day. This is a pizza day. Please explain to me why the cryptocurrency community celebrates this day every year. Yes, this is a, actually a, a stellar day. And thanks for having me and us. This is good to see you again over this uh, medium and happy to talk to you and the audience who is listening. Yes, it's the pizza day. It's now 10 years and we have many many great days today is another one where it's uh, 10 years that uh, laszlo offered bitcoins for two pizzas and it was more like a joke i think a test into the market does it really work that you can buy some good stuff i mean stuff you can eat mm -hmm. and something you can touch and it, i think pizza is a nice uh, proxy for such an experiment yeah that was the 18th of may he launched it and on the 22nd he was successful somebody sold him two pizzas for the very modest amount of uh, 10,000 Bitcoins. Wow, wow. And how much is that worth today? In today's I tour? guess around $100 million. It's quite a fantastic return of investment, yeah. Uh, not for him, unfortunately. Yeah, not for him, unfortunately. But he's a legend. Maybe that's worth even more than 100 million, yeah, right? Because every year the community uh, memorizes that famous day, the pizza day. And for me, actually, it means a lot because sometimes you have a discussion, what's worth a Bitcoin? And I said, already 10 years ago, it was proven that you can buy food. And if there is something basic, then I would say food. Um, but 10 years ago today, if we look at it today, no one's buying coffee and food with Bitcoin today. Um, would you agree that it's more of a unit of account on account it's more of an asset rather than a currency as such today yeah that's a big question of course what's a currency etc legal tender but i i would protest a little bit robert that i'm buying food i'm buying drinks we have a restaurant nearby who accepts we have actually quite some shops here in Zug and in switzerland who accept bitcoin even ether i mean it's expanding so you can buy with various currencies and don't forget we started a partnership with Worldline. Worldline is the biggest European payment service provider, and they cover in alone in Switzerland, 100,000 merchants in Europe, 500,000. And we are the exclusive partner when they start to roll out mid of year to their merchant acceptance of crypto. So you're going to see a lot of shops out there who accept it. That's a good point. And Starbucks actually accepts it as well. So one could theoretically. Um, I want to get to talk a little bit more about the company Bitcoin Swiss that you are running now as CEO. Um, it is a company that is has been a pioneer very clearly for the last seven years before the topic was as hot as it is today and, and in recent years, and has gone through a lot of ups and downs. Most of these companies with similar offerings are no longer here today. Yet you guys have persisted. You've gone through the troughs and through the peaks. And uh, I want to explain, I, I'd like to ask you why, what is the secret of your success? How have you prevailed? Yes, and thanks for that question, because first of all, let me thank the team of Bitcoin Swiss, as it was back then, seven years ago, when they all started, a handful of people extremely committed to the idea to make it a success but also not just looking at some financial returns because they deeply, deeply thought that this crypto Bitcoin as such is a concept which is a challenger, which is a next idea into the financial services industry. Not meaning that this is covering everything, but it's just the next idea, which is probably seen, best seen in the peer-to-peer -peer landscape. Now, when they started, it was actually quite a good moment uh, but right after start, we are talking August 2013, the first crash came, Mt. Gox and any other challenges were uh, surfacing. 
uh, magic sauce, I would say, is a sum of many things. But at the end, it starts and ends with the people, the resilience, the belief, the conviction, and the purpose. And I think they had it all together, and they believed in the cause, and that made them survive. And that's good news, because the firm today is privileged to have the very same founders of those days active, very active with the firm. So today we have over 140 people uh, acting and uh, fighting for the cause, if I may say so. But this is a nice mix of talents from the crypto scene, but also from the financial scene. And together, I think we are just more than the sum of it. And that's why we believe we have yet another great chapter ahead and then many, many more. So yeah. after three years of survival, of uh, going through the famous valley of death, the first signs of success started. That was when Ethereum came, the second blockchain, where Bitcoin Swiss was right in the middle to help them to get going. And then we had many more coins coming to the market, accepting, acceptance started, etc. So it came nicely together. And with every year more, you were proven that you actually can survive, that you actually can deliver. And in a nutshell, the magic of it all is that we service our clients. The clients were always coming with their needs and we were not sitting and imagining something fancy. No, we tried to really nicely cover the needs of the clients. At the essence, it's that, I guess. Very good. So, I mean, from my experience, all people who really love Bitcoin um, are evangelists to some extent for the, for the technology, but few have ever found a way to actually earn some money from it. Yeah. And Bitcoin Swiss, I just looked at the audited results. The audited resu results are retained earnings of 52 million. So you Actually, 54. It's 54, excuse me, yeah. Just add 50, two, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 54 million. Yes. And yet you guys, I just read last year, you're planning a capital round. Yes, our first. With 54 million of cash. What, why do you need extra money and why now? Yes, also first of all, it's capital and some of it is cash. But yes, it's a good question. Listen, uh, operationally, we don't need it. We pay our salaries and rent we pay out of what we earn from our turnover. So that's good news. But looking at the market, at the competition and at the opportunities out there in the market, there is definitely now the moment where we had to come together, the key shareholders and obviously the board, and to contemplate pre-corona, to contemplate isn't there now for the firm as well a moment where we have to go to our friends and partners to open up shareholders, a shareholder base, in yet in order to accelerate our growth further, because we can invest as much as we can out of the earnings, what we do operationally, but that limits you to the pace you have based on the business generated. But we have many more ideas, which we think we can really go after, but we also have a bit of a discipline in the house. We don't want to overspend because yes, you need to have reserves. Look at what just happened, Corona, COVID, that was actually a, a, an extreme acid test to startups and small firms or medium-sized firms like, like ours. Do they have some reserves, etc.? So it was actually great that we had reserves to look at, but at the same time, we have to look through to that disaster phase and say, there is so much more to come. And in combination, we decided that was end February, beginning of March. Yes, we do our first Series A. Uh, founding round. Yeah, and then mid-March came. And mid-March, you know, was the beginning of the disaster, so to speak, or the official disaster. And we had to decide, do we go or do we stop? We decided despite Corona, we go, we look through, because it's tough to say what means exactly post-Corona. So mm. we decided to launch it in two phases, friends and family, which is already nicely closed now. After a month only, we had the treasury because we have two... Uh, pillars which we can offer and the first pillar of our treasury shares is done already and now we are in the sec second phase which is called qualified investors round. So when you speak about opportunities can you can you um, sort of elaborate more on these opportunities because there are also clearly some threats it seems every central bank is also designing a stable coin or a or a national cryptocurrency. I 
What right. are the opportunities specifically, Arthur? Yes, and uh, you wouldn't be surprised to hear that also from our side, we did the famous SWOT analysis to see at our strengths, our uniqueness, our pioneering state, but also our ability to catch the opportunities of the market. That's actually a determining factor at the, at the firm. We're not per se an innovator, but we see the opportunities coming very early. We are close to those opportunities, the very moment the, of the, the opportunity is out there in the market, technically, we basically service and offer it to our clients. Um, when you talk uh, national banks and uh, governments contemplating their own uh, currencies, state currencies, state cryptocurrencies, uh, or also big uh, tech firms as Facebook came with Libra, etc. Uh, down the road, uh, net net, we see that extremely positively, because if one thing helps the whole crypto finance industry as a such, then this is the network effect. And with every other player entering the scene and being active and reputable entities such as national banks doing such activities, initiatives, investigations, if they want to do it and also announce to the market that they're planning, etc. With every other actor with such high reputation entering the crypto field is actually a, a, a proof point that this is a valid uh, idea to consider at least. Mm -hmm. And as such, it helps us being in the midst of a successful business venue. Fantastic. So it's really also a signaling effect that the Absolutely. Chinese, the U US, the UK, UK central banks are really working on, on this future. If we look for the last question, Arthur, this has been fantastic interview, by the way, so far. The last question, let's look into the future of crypto assets. Yes. Where do you see the future going? And where do you see the future of Bitcoin Swiss? Do you see yourself as a regulated bank? Um, uh, international, perhaps? Where do you see the future of the industry? Where do you see the future of Bitcoin Swiss within that? Yes, we actually are already regulated because we act uh, along the AML uh, license path and did that already. We were the first in Switzerland who got actually uh, access to that. And uh, since 2014, we're audited under AML procedures, very much like any other financial service provider in Switzerland and, and, and the world, actually. And uh, we're, yes, aspiring to more licenses, one in Switzerland and one in Liechtenstein, because we want to go international. And we know for a fact that we would have huge successes in Europe. But for that to do that properly and also with the expansion in mind, uh, we need the licenses. So, yes, we are. We're doing that, but we don't want to become yet another bank. Of course, we want to retain our crypto innate capabilities and the uniqueness of a crypto tech, uh, crypto tech firm and as such. But in order to play that broadly, you need the licenses. And to go to the market further, I would say we have uh, uh, basically in mind, and that's a belief, but we see that uh, unfolding since seven years now, that from the early stage where the crypto uh, affine people, young and a senior, it's not only an age question, it's more a question of how curious you are or if you retained your curiosity to the new things. So it's really about this. But now we see what is famously called the tokenization. Uh, more and more, uh, besides that, we had more and more alternatives to Bitcoin. That is also a great challenge to the mother coin, the Bitcoin per se. But now the idea is also to wrap around the crypto technology of established uh, financial instrument. So um, the word you're going to hear in that context more and more is so-called decentralized finance. A very crude uh, summary of that word is basically standard finance wrapped by the opportunity of decentral crypto technology. And you're going to see more and more and more. But let me share with you my inner belief, my, my deepest thought I can have. This is all very natural evolution in the context of peer-to-peer -peer interactions. It started early on when internet came all along. And that offered the opportunity to send each other emails, then pictures, then videos. Uh, 3D printing is pretty hot these days. And now it's a, sort of a natural thing that we would exchange peer-to-peer -peer value and trust the technology that makes this possible, which basically is crypto technology. 
Fantastic. It looks like we really need to watch the space. I have one more very in question that is intriguing to me. You have a beautiful picture behind you um, with a, a number of people on a mountain. Can you tell me the story about that picture? Yes, that's a fantastic story. When I joined uh, the firm many years back, uh, the firm had only about 20 people in those days as a CEO. And then I was, we were discussing what kind of team event we could actually do. And I casually dropped, we could do a 4,000. You know that I love the mountains and that they did quite a few. And uh, I casually dropped and it wouldn't be Bitcoin Swiss that uh, they were enthusiastic about the idea. Yes, but uh, we had so much to do that we had no chance at all in 2018 to even think about such uh, adventures. But then 2019, finally, we reached the moment where we said, now the time has come. In the meantime, though, Bitcoin has Bitcoin Swiss has grown from 20 people to over 70 people. So it was a bit of a challenge, but we ventured for it. And so in July last year, uh, with about 14 mountain guides, we uh, conquered as Bitcoin Swiss, the Breithorn, which is sort of an accessible mountain in Switzerland. But yes, it is a 4,000er. It's 4,164 meters to be precise. And from 69 people who uh, applied, we made it possible that 66 reached the top, which was a great success. We did even a Bitcoin trade. So we claim to have done the highest trade ever in Bitcoin. And the marriage proposal was done and it was just a great day. And I'm so happy and thankful that all went very well. But of course, we, as you know, I have a lot of experience and together with the 15 mountain guides from Zermatt, we were actually quite safe on the way. And uh, Zermatt as such was enthusiastic as well. And they decided almost on the spot to accept Bitcoin and Ether as payment tokens and in Zermatt, you can now pay your taxes with crypto, with Bitcoin and Ether. And we are the facilitator to it. So it was really a nice event on all aspects. Well, it seems like it won't be the last one either, if, especially if you have such a positive business impact following the event as well. Yes, and I think already of the 100,000 merchants waiting eagerly for us and the world line together to conquer Switzerland and Europe at the least. Wonderful. Arthur, I wish you and Bitcoin Swiss all the very best. Uh, Godspeed and until the next time. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Stay safe.